my name is Jessica Goodman, and I just want to tell you thank you for letting me speak here today on the behalf of my fiance, Martez Harrison, and on the behalf of my um, soon-to-be four-year-old daughter. Her birthday is May 3rd, two days after he took his, her dad's life. And on the behalf of my family and his family as well, including his mom, his dad, his brother, and his other brother. I was gonna sit here and read all of this. It's a two and a half page letter. I'm gonna read it, but I just need to tell you something. I do not accept your apology. No, you will never be forgiven. You took somebody away from me and my child that meant the world to us with no hesitation. You pulled the trigger more than once. No, that is not okay. They say that you can rehabil be rehabilitated? Possibly. No, do I think that will ever happen? No. Why do I not think that that will happen? Because you did it without remorse. You did it with no hesitation. You had the choice to be with them. I grew up without a mother and a father as well. I grew up in group homes, but I made the choice not to be in the streets like my mom and dad were. I made the choice never to be around guns. I made a choice to not be around drugs. It's your choice. They show pictures of you as a child. What about my child? I wake up every day to her crying for her dad. I can't give her that. And I tell her that every day, Dwight, every day. She's gonna be four on May 3rd, do you understand that? It's gonna be two years and 11 days that her dad's been gone. And you decided to take his life two days before her birthday. So celebrate where? How can we do that? We can't. We have to remember her dad for her birthday. That's what she gets. Maybe later on down the line, I'll, me mentally, I'll be able to give my daughter that. But you made that choice. I told myself I wasn't going to come here and cry. I made a promise that I was going to speak from my heart and let Dwight Evans know how much he has changed my life. Not only my life, but my daughter's life. Not only hers, but the ones you see in this courtroom today and also um, via Zoom. Not only how did you change it and, and not only how did you change it, but on also how it hurts deeper. It hits deeper in a deeper spot because you decided to take somebody's life that meant the world to us. And you did it effort, effortlessly with no hesitation to raise your hand, pull a trigger, not once, but twice, and killed somebody that meant a world, the world to a lot of people. You know, while I was growing up, I was young. <laughs> Even still to this day, I had a lot of people that tells me never to hate anybody in this world, but I hate you, and I'm not afraid to tell you. And I mean that I hate you, I despise you. You, de you decided to off somebody on somebody else's word. <laughs> that day you took Martez Harrison's life, May 1st of 2021. Think back, go back with me, you remember? Yeah, I know you do, you were there. Not only were you there, but I was there, Tezza was there, Elle was there, Naya was there, and Jordan was there, and a few other people. But nobody in this courtroom knows exactly what happened to the tea besides me and you. When I arrived at Dave's, Dave's that night, and I noticed the four of you surrounding the door trying to jump Martez, he didn't deserve that. You had no type of family history with that lady that that uh, Rockwood had called about? Did you even know her? But as I noticed, he was already inside the bar and you guys had already had fought. What was the point of sticking around? Yeah, because you were, you were on a mission that wasn't complete. That's why you stuck around. After all the fighting and the commotion, I heard that first gunshot. 
and I turn around yelling at you, Dwight, please don't shoot him. You still decided to shoot him a second time. You had no mercy. You did it effortlessly. You did it with no hesitation. But then you turn around and you ran like a little bitch. I say a little bitch because you didn't use anything but a weapon. I say a little bitch because you stood there behind somebody that was in a fair fight. You committed a murder and you ran from the scene of a crime you committed. And then you go, and then we go through court to do this trial and you pretend like you don't remember anything that happened. It was the drugs, right? The drugs made you do it. But who made you do the drugs? You did them on your own. You decided that it was gonna be perfectly fine for you to kill Martez. You ripped my fucking heart out of my body that night. I had to say goodbye. Not only did you rip my heart out of my body, but you also ripped my soul out my body. And then again, when I had to tell my daughter that her dad was gone. And then again, when we had to say goodbye to her dad. But he might be gone now, God rest his soul. But I hope you get a maximum sentence with life without parole or whatever the judge can possibly give you because this, this is an unjustly crime that you committed. It wasn't no accident. Nobody forced you to go anywhere. You were there on your own will. You had a weapon, a gun at your own will. You lifted your hand and pulled a trigger at your own will. So I pray to God, since they say that you're so godly now, that he, that him and the judge will see, that will give you a time see fit. And I hope you never see daylight again or ever breathe fresh air. And the reason why I pray to God something like this, or the reason why I pray to God something like that is because you affected my whole entire life and my whole entire family. I'm so tired of fighting and struggling with my battles all on my own, raising a child that I decided to have a family with this man. I have to raise her on my own. She cries for her dad so much. <laughs> Mommy, all I wanna do is see my daddy. Mommy, I wanna give my daddy a hug. Mommy, can daddy please fix my bike? I can't give her that because you made the choice to take him. Or the fact that she says, Mommy, I just want to lay with my daddy. That's what I get to hear. Yeah, you got your mother, you got your father, you got your brother and your sister. And you still have your life. That's something that I can't replace in Martez. I can't give him life because it's already taken. You can still hear their voices. I don't get that option and neither does she. And they talk about letting you out to create a family. I hope that never happens because your children might turn out just like you. Uh, uh, I'll sustain that. Uh, Ma'am, I'll, I'll explain to you. Uh, uh, I understand it's important for you to, uh, to say uh, what's in your heart and what you came here to say. Uh, but uh, she's correct that uh, under the law, uh, the purpose of your statement here today is to tell the court how this has affected you. Uh, and, and I know you're doing a lot of that, and I'm hearing that. Uh, but some of the other portions are, are unfortunately uh, not permissible. Okay. So, um, well, I don't know which parts are supposed to be that, but I'll just continue reading it. If it's not, can you just stop me? Certainly. Thank you. Or I'll, I'll rely on Ms. Eimerman to do that. So. Okay. <laughs> And you know what's really crazy? Just a couple weeks ago, my youngest niece and my daughter, age four and age three, my daughter's three, looking out a window telling my sister, we're yelling to my Uncle Tezo and my daddy that we miss him, that we love him. My baby has to yell to a sky. <laughs> That's not fair. But then again, life's not fair, right? Ever since that night, I've been mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially drained. I'm not myself, days of depression, days of missing work, days of not wanting to do anything. Days of months of feeling worthless. worthless. Do you feel these things? Do you have flashbacks too?
The night you took Tezo's life, oh, hold on, it was, do you have flashbacks too to the night you took Tezo's life? Because I do. I have to wear his face on a shirt just to see him in my daily life. I hope with me telling you this kinda helps me heal. I honestly try, I honestly try to put everything in the nicest way possible. But you and your so-called friends deserve every bit of time you get. And to be honest, it should be a life for a life because you were man enough to be out at a bar at 12.30 to 1.30 in the morning. You were man enough to tote a pistol. You were man enough to use... Uh, I'll sustain that. So, so I can't say that? Uh, no, you need to uh, keep it uh, not about uh, Mr. Evans, but about what this has, how this has impacted you, your family, your child, etc. That night impacted me in so many different ways. He had that choice. How come? How is that different than what how it made me feel, because or how I think about him? Because that's what you're permitted to talk about is what it has done to you. Well, to me, I think that you're a good for nothing and never, it never will be nothing. Sorry, just a waste of breath, a waste of, how is that an objection? Sustained That's now. just how I feel. That's how he made me feel about him. Correct, ma'am. Uh, and I, I'm really, I'm really sorry. I'm not, I, I understand this is hard for this you. This is a victim. And just, just a moment. And I'm not trying to give you a hard time, okay? Uh, I understand this is very difficult for you. Um, but that's correct. Um, uh, telling Mr. Evans how you feel about him is not the purpose of coming here. It's, or the way that he made me feel? It is to tell me what this has done to you. That's the purpose of your statement. Okay, well, I'll just read the part from my daughter. And, and per perhaps we could do it this way, and maybe it would um, uh, help uh, with your uh, difficulty understanding. Um, ultimately, a victim impact statement is addressed uh, to the court. In other words, you would not speak directly to Mr. Evans. You would be telling me what it is that you want me to know about what this has done to you. So maybe that would help. Okay. Well, let me start here. Hold on. Let me... I got to read to it. Sorry. It's okay. But if it's okay with the court, on the behalf of my three-year-old daughter's point of view and how she feels and how we feel, he took her dad away from her. When she had to say her goodbyes to her dad and he decided to take her away from her, it was just two days before her second birthday. How am I supposed to explain that to my two-year-old on her birthday, why her dad's not there? But I did, and we accomplished it. And on Martez's birthday, my daughter says, Mom, why are we celebrating Daddy's birthday if he's not here? Hard one to swallow. And then here comes Thanksgiving, and here comes Christmas, Christmas, and he's, again, not there. And every day in between them days, he's still not here. My baby walks around with a barrier on her that has her dad's voice in it. That's how she gets to hear him. I show her videos on how great her dad really was and on how much that he really loved her. <laughs> there was one day we were driving in the car and she points to the sky and she says, look, mommy, my daddy painted the sky for me again as I just sit there and tear up and break down. Zakai was the best thing that ever happened to him. It changed his whole life around. When I found out that I was pregnant, he changed his life for the better. Yeah, he still did drink, don't get me wrong, but he changed his life around for not just him, but for his daughter. And that was still taken from her. 
The love and the joy, the smiling faces, you took all of that from her. We have him sitting at home on a banister because I decided to get him cremated. My daughter kisses his urn every day and every night. How is that supposed to make me feel? Hold on, I just have to read through it so I'm not saying stuff I'm not supposed to say. You take your time, ma'am. Your Honor, he, at this point in time, he took my daughter's joy away. Yes, I'm her mom, but she was so in love with her dad. <laughs> Crying out at night, she still does. It'll be two years in 11 days. It'll be two years in 11 days that, she, that he will be gone. She'll forever miss that. Your Honor, I went from having a job of my own, my own place, having my own vehicle, before this night occurred, I went to having nothing because my mental was so traumatized. I go to therapy. My daughter goes to therapy. I relive this day over and over. The last thing Tezo told me before he died, before he took that last breath outside of days on that ground, babe, please take me home. What about Kaya? Where is she? Those were the last words I got to hear from him. And all I could do was Yell, stay with me. I love you. God, please don't take him. Please stay with me. That night in the hospital, I had got treated myself for an eye wound. I still have a scar above my left eye. You guys didn't only injure him, but you injured me as well. When I got to that hospital, I wasn't even worried about me being maced or me having an eye wound that's just bleeding profusely. I was so worried about Tezo that I made them super glue my eye together instead of giving me the stitches I needed. And so I went into that waiting room where I had to wait until the doctor came in and they worked on him for hours, Your Honor, hours. And that doctor came to me, explaining me his condition, and he told me, at this time, he has passed away three times already and we brought him back to life. The fourth time while we were in the room with him, he wanted his life, he was fighting to be here. <laughs> he fought so hard. Me and, his, me and his brother and my sister Kayla walked into that hospital room as they shocked his chest over and over, watching the monitor. There was no heartbeat. And they did it again, and still no heartbeat. And they did it again, and finally a heartbeat. They had him cut open, Your Honor, from his chest to his groin. Just to see him like that, all I could do was ask why. He's a fighter. He died four times and came back. He wanted to be here with us, all of us. But he had no choice. But as me and my sister Kayla and his brother sat in the hospital bed, tubes everywhere coming out of every part of his body. <laughs> There was blood everywhere just to say goodbye. I sat there for a very long time in tears trying to figure out life and I couldn't just leave because it didn't make sense to me. He's supposed to be coming home with me. <sighs> the 
The only thing I can do as I sat by his side is what about my baby? What about our baby? What about our daughter? She's only one. Her birthday's in two days, breaking down to the floor because I was at my weakest point in life. My sister had to hold me up because I was so weak to stand. And if you ever wondered, the day that we laid him to rest was May 12th, just so you know. I want you to know that you brought me to my weakest in my life. It's so hard to climb out of this dark place that I now have to deal with in my life. It's been so long already. And I hope you get the maximum sentence without the life of, without the possibility of parole. I really hope that you guys give him that your honor. It will forever be long live Tezo. And I'm shouting that deep down in me, long live him. I need justice for him today. And I hope we get just that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.